of this right here, guys. We're going to spend the next. We're going to spend the next probably half hour on this right here. It's Coach Lane here. I'm right here. You go ahead and show the twister, and then I'll go to this. Guys, uh, Coach, we're going to spend the next. If I could have one ride, I guess, guys, the next. Uh, or with 20 seconds left to match, this would be the ride. I'm going to show you three big turns that we go through from here. All right, before I get to that guy, uh, Coach Lang has one of the best twisters I've ever seen. All right, and again, I'm not a big fan of this move. It's a surprise move that you can hit on a guy. A lot of you guys know it, but I'm going to have Coach Lang very short before you get the call. Go ahead, Coach. All right, guys. Um, we, didn't, we didn't go, no one went over a front headlock to hit. No. All right, we didn't go over a front headlock this time. Usually we do. And before we get to the, to the actual technique, just so you know, always front headlock position. It, it's just like everywhere else in wrestling, we're trying to control him by staying in our stance. We control him with our body. So his head's always in the center of our chest. Now, before we do this, here's the problem with showing this. It actually works. This works. And the problem is you guys see this as instant gratification. You're gonna go out there, you're gonna be people that are better than you, you're gonna pin a lot of people, and then you forget about the head inside the single, the double legs, and stuff that's really gonna carry you in the rest of the career. Don't make this number one, all right? At the same time, there's gonna come a point in your season where you're down by four, you need a big move, you need a five point move, all right, you might need to pin the guy, and this is definitely a great option. Also, this is a great threat. If you got a good twister, Honestly, if you have a good twister and this guy knows it, all right, he's going to let go. He's going to give you some ground point because he's afraid of what can happen. Now, this is going to happen from an, a, a front headlock and an underhook. Now, you guys see this position here, especially little guys, and you think muscle. You think, all right, I have a, a cow catcher or a cement job position, and you get here, and you just try to take the guy over here, and it's all about your muscle here. And you know what, against the stud, that's never going to work. I'm never just going to be able to take this guy over cow catcher, especially against the tough guy. But when this guy thinks here that I want to go this way, it creates a reaction, and he pulls down his right arm. Right? And that's what I need. Mean. So the threat, the threat here of my cow catcher creates a reaction of him pulling down his right arm. That's going to create an opportunity for us to go this direction. So, I really have one or two options. One, I bulldog this guy over. I'm meaner, I'm tougher, I'm stronger. I get an angle, we take him over cow catcher. Very unlikely. Two, he defends that. He defends the cow catcher cement job. It creates an opportunity for the twister. Here's what's gonna happen. This underhook arm is gonna stay here the entire time. I'm gonna get an underhook and it's gonna stay here. My hand that's on a typical front headlock chin position is now gonna transition and it's gonna grab his wrist. So the front headlock hand, my right hand, is gonna reach over, it's gonna grab his right wrist. Now, I'm gonna get up on my toes. Remember, Matthew didn't want me to take him this direction, so he wings down, he elbows down with his right arm. Now I'm gonna spin, notice I sp said spin, not roll, I'm gonna spin as hard as I can to my left, to my underhook side. As I do this, all right, I'm gonna, in midstream, I'm gonna run around his head, I'm gonna end up getting on his back. So from here, I spin. I'm gonna go out halfway and stop. As I spin, notice, I don't hit my back, all right? I'm on my head. When I get right about here, we're gonna let go of this wrist. Notice, my right hand had his wrist, my left hand's in the underhook. Right about here, I let go of his wrist. I'll come back to the chin. I'll run my hips around his head and look for the fall. Definitely it's a home run move, without question. It's a blatant home run move, but you know what? It works, and sometimes this guy knows it's coming, he still can't stop him. Again, underhook, left arm. Right hand that's on the chin, he's gonna go right here to his wrist. From here, I'm gonna get up on my toes, I'm gonna pressure into Matthew. Now, I'm gonna spin. I don't go away from my underhook, I go towards my underhook and my head goes under. As I go under, I don't roll across my back, I spin, so I should be back arching here, to here. Now notice, when I get him out to this position, I don't keep rolling where he bellies out, I run my hips around his head. So I'm gonna let go of that wrist, I'm gonna run around his head. On my toes, spin, to here. Now notice, I let go of that wrist, and my feet, my hips, are running in front, around his head. I keep this chin, I lift up on the head, 
My arms across the back. I'm looking for that cement job. Here's what you guys are going to do wrong. One, you guys will go the wrong way. We get guys that, for some reason, they spin this direction. That's not it. Two, you guys will not let go of that wrist and you'll go all the way through. You'll end up facing him still. At some point, in the middle of that, I let go of the wrist. When I feel him hit, I've already got him towards his back. I run my hips around his head. One more time. Under hook. On my toes. Here. Now look. I got him on his side. My hips are parallel to that. His hips are not. I'm going to run and run right in front of his body. Keep that chin. Run him up. I'm looking for the ball. Let's do it. One, two, three.